Hello everybody, Hassan here, engineer, MBA, and investor. And in today's last video for 2022, I want to talk about CRISPR and 2023. I want to talk about how I strongly believe, how I strongly believe that in 2023, the story will be all about CRISPR. And of course, I want to start with this article that was given by one of our followers in the community and they said to me say hey look take a look at that this article and I go over this article and says scientists discovered 100,000 viruses never seen before and basically it's going over uh, I'm just gonna read out like one or two line here just to give a quick description of this article it's a short article but it says scientists have identified more than 100,000 RNA viruses that have never been seen before a new st study has revealed uh, and basically, if we scroll down all the way down, I believe we'll see basically the outcome of this uh, or the potential outcome of this uh, is uh, that, uh, where can I find this? Um, uh, there was a line describing it, but basically it's going to be potentially used, uh, you know, to fight off diseases. Oh, here, latest discovery could aid development of treatments against antibiotic resistant pathogens, as well as defenses against Agriculturally harmful bacteria, fungi, fungi, pests, and researchers said. So, of course, this is the research paper, right? And notice that in this article, in this news media article, and again, shout out to Newsweek for even covering this uh, study paper. Uh, most news media never even cover research papers. They cover what other news media that done the work to read research papers cover. So, uh, I'm not sure if they did the same thing here, but a shout out for them for anyways covering it. Uh, the only thing is that they never mentioned CRISPR in this article, right? They never mentioned CRISPR. If I go ahead and CRISPR, search for CRISPR, the word CRISPR, it is never mentioned in this article yet. And the actual research paper that they linked in the article actually covers research, CRISPR in the summary covers CRISPR in the abstract and of course in the intro and of course CRISPR is used here as a form of technology to find out all these hundred thousand viruses that they just discovered that was never discovered before it was of course done with CRISPR as a tool and of course we've covered this many times in the past where CRISPR is more than just human therapeutics it could be used as really a scientific tool there to you know make discoveries to maybe aid with different forms of technologies in the biotech space we saw you know we saw Ginkgo Bioworks making uh, mentions about how CRISPR is a lot more than just human therapeutics for what they're involved with, with whatever they're trying to do in their vertical in the biotech space. Uh, and, or, you know, you could extrapolate that to sequencing, like, you know, mammal biosciences, they're all in diagnostics. So obviously CRISPR has a lot, a big, big role in this storyline that we're in. And I wanted to really, you know, now that I've covered this article, um, and of course, the research paper tied to it. I want to talk about 2023. I think 2023 is going to be the year for CRISPR. I really, really believe it. There are a couple of reasons why. Um, first of all, the obvious, we're going to have a uh, an official answer from the FDA for CRISPR therapeutics and Vertex for their program, their successful program so far, CTX-001, to tackle sickle cell disease and beta thalassemia. We'll be getting additional data from NTLA 2001, NTLA 2002. I wouldn't be surprised if by the tail end of 2023, we start uh, hearing um, some comments from the CEO and leadership that they may you know, go for a FDA submission approval in 2024, early part of 2024. Um, I don't expect that to happen um, up until really the last two or three months of 2023, but nonetheless, it's a possibility. Then you take a look at Caribou as a company, CBO10, successful program so far, above average data or at least average data, some may argue, the worst critics anyways, uh, in terms of durability, but still, you know, we have some data there, we're going to be getting data, additional data, we're increasing dosage, potentially increasing frequency like we mentioned in our video covering the latest Caribou's update. Then we'll have Verve 101 data from UK, New Zealand, and of course, potentially in the US as the FDA uh, goes through the documentation for the IND submission for Verve 101. And most importantly, we'll be getting data for Beam 101, Beam Therapeutics. I think a lot of people in this space support Beam Therapeutics for numerous reasons, including myself. 
Uh, but, you know, there's one critic, you know, that they've been unable to shut down or silence, and that's the fact that they've been unable to provide any sort of human clinical data on their end. And I think that is extremely important. Now, if you listen to researchers, if you listen to scientists, if you listen to investors, there's no other reason to believe that they'll be getting any short and amazing data from Beam 101. But again, numbers don't lie. We need to see numbers. I look at facts. I look at science. I look at reports, data, and that's what my opinion is always based on. Um, so that's going to be exciting for 2023. We'll be seeing, of course, more from Graphite Bio. We'll be seeing more from Prime Medicine potentially, potential IPO from Mamo, and maybe we'll be seeing, um, you know, Edit has get their things together, hopefully. But that's what it is in you know, the business side of the world and, of course, clinical data and programs, the phase one, phase two, and phase three. Now I want to talk about some of the things that I've noticed in the last week. All of my videos in the last four, five, six videos have all gathered over 300 views. Some of them gotten over 400 views. In fact, the video yesterday that I published, it was on the worst day of the week for YouTube videos, which is Friday night. Most YouTubers know this. It was during one of the worst market recession that we've had in basically years, if not decades. And it's on a topic, CRISPR as a topic, it's not even mainstream yet. Yet it garnished over 600 views under 24 hours as we speak today. And I believe this is an indication that people are hungry. There's an appetite for CRISPR information. As we navigate through this recession to this bear market, as we navigate into 2023, where we potentially go back to a bull market towards the end of the year, potentially, I think people are looking at the, their portfolio, looking at stocks available. So how can I diversify myself? How can I enter in different verticals that I've never been exposed to? And for them to be able to take that decision, retail investors anyway, and even institutions, they need to research and part of research is going on YouTube, looking at Twitter, looking at Reddit and of course YouTube. That's why I've seen lots of views in the last week. And of course, it helps that we're in uh, the holidays time. People have a little bit more screen time, but this doesn't change the fact it's on the worst day of the week, which is Friday night for YouTube videos. And we're in a recession and yet I've gone in, I've garnished basically. I've, got, I've gathered the most views I've gone in under 24 hours and it wasn't even a, it wasn't even of a crazy video on a crazy data topic, a topic that, you know, they risk release, breaking news and whatnot. This is some generic CRISPR video and it's gotten so many views. I truly believe 2023 is going to be all about CRISPR. I really, really believe this. I think for the first part that I explained, I think that obviously matters. And of course, we haven't even talked about the third part, which is, uh, so it's the first part is what I talked about. Second part is what I just explained where I'm seeing a lot of different views, lots of replies, lots of people reaching out for CRISPR. Uh, and then the third part is, you know, some of these governments looking into it, like Cures 2.0 Act in the US, which I believe will get some traction in 2023. It's a bipartisan bill. It was the 1.0, which was passed a few years ago. Uh, it was passed bipartisan bill. It was fully supported in the US. I see no reason why it wouldn't be passed in 2023. Uh, but we'll cover that story when that happens for sure. But there's really a lot of reason. I can go on four or five, six other reasons why 2023 will be a big, big year for CRISPR. I'm very excited, guys. I am so excited. I truly believe this and, you know, all, all my mind at this point is all about researching, covering this news for you guys, letting you guys know about the latest uh, and greatest uh, data, the news, the, the research papers, just like we just took a look at somewhat here. I, I really think there's something to be said. I think we're, you know, one of the pioneers, right? We're in the S-curve, we're very early, but as an S-curve stands, as what it stands for, Things are going to ramp up really, really quick, and I think 2023 is going to be that year. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video. It is the last video for 2022. It's an enjoyable year. I think we've done a lot in this channel, and I think 2023 is going to be even fun, funner, if I may say, although that's not a good grammar. Uh, it's going to be a really, it's going to be a good time because the good times are ahead. Uh, I'm having fun. I'm enjoying myself here with these videos. And I know a lot of you are by liking, sharing, commenting, of course, subscribing as well. 
Uh, I really, really appreciate it, guys. And let me know in the comments below what you guys think about 2023 and CRISPR. Let me know. Curious to hear about you guys. Curious to see where you guys stand here. Uh, lots of exciting things, guys. Happy holidays, guys. Last year, happy uh, new year if we don't speak. And I'll see you guys in 2023. Take care.